King Midas probably didn't know how to use the pen tool or selection or masking. If he did, I think his story wouldn't be that tragic. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you the Midas touch, but fortunately or unfortunately, only in Photoshop. We're gonna turn metal to gold, especially in this example, we're gonna turn a Range Rover, Land Rover, Range Rover, to gold using blend modes and masking and all that cool stuff. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning this day into a beautiful one. Well, if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. The very first thing we will do here is just apply the gold shine and color. To do that, simply create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and choose a gold color. Now, if you don't know which gold color to select and if you're confused, you can always go online and search for gold color hex code. There are lots of shades of gold you can find and you can try all of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a gold color here. So let's go a little more yellowish. This color seems to be fine and we can always change this later. Let's go with this one. Hit OK. We first want to add shine or brightness. And what is the blend mode that brightens stuff? Screen, right? So change the blend mode from normal to screen. But we don't want to apply it to the dark area. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and simply just take it away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Again, this is gonna be harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart to make the transition between the areas which are visible and the areas where the solid color is not visible, make that transition smoother. All right, so let's go with a smoother transition like this one. How do you feel about that? All right, let's keep it at that. Now for the dark areas, we need to do the same thing. So let's make a copy of the same gold. So this is gold bright, all right? Controller command J, and this is gonna be gold dark. Now what's the blend mode which darken stuff? Multiply. So the reason we choose multiply and not darken or any other blend mode in the darken group is because the multiply has a smooth gradient. Let's go with multiply and we will do just the opposite in the blend if section. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and let's just reset that. And in this case, we wanna take this away from the bright areas because we only wanted to apply it in the dark area. Sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? All right, so let's take the slider on the right to the left. Again, we're gonna break it apart by holding the Alt key or the Option key, single click on the slider to break it apart and just break it apart just like that. It looks fine at the moment. Now. The gold color still doesn't look completely gold because there was already a tint of this mist color in there. We first want to take that away. So how do we take that away? Well, simply create a black and white adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose black and white. Now on top of that, if you turn them on, it looks more realistically gold-ish without any color shifts. Now you must be thinking that the gold is all over the place. Don't worry about that right now. We're gonna take care of that later. But for right now, I feel that the shine in the golden areas are not too much. So how do we add all the more reflections, shine and all that contrast? You know what I'm talking about. Can you guess it? Well, it's in camera raw, hint number one. Have you guessed it yet? No? I'm sure you have guessed it. It's clarity. So just below the black and white adjustment layer, select the background layer again, press Control or Command J. And in this copy, first of all, let's go to filter and then convert for smart filter. Hit OK. So that this is now a smart object. Whatever filter we apply, in this case, it's going to be camera raw. We can always go back and change the values later. So this is going to be for clarity. And let's go to filter, camera raw filter. Here we are only going to focus on the car. Let's scroll down and just simply increase clarity and have a look. All of the reflections just get so much more enhanced. So you can have it all the way to the max or slight bit. That's up to you. We can always control this later. For this example, let's keep it at about 66. You can also try increasing the texture and see what that does. Don't focus anywhere else. Only the metal parts of the car, which you plan on turning to gold. A little bit of texture probably will make the gold a little more realistic. So we're going to keep it at about 50 and hit OK. Take a look at the difference. Now it looks more like gold. Time for the final game changing part. We will have to limit all of these adjustments that we did to create that gold surface limited just to where we want it to be limited to. Now there are a couple of interesting ways of doing it. You can use the pen tool to minutely go ahead and create a path around the object that you want to turn to gold. 
and then turn that path into selection and turn that selection into mask. You can also use the brush tool to brush on the areas which you want to turn to gold or you can use your favorite selection method it's absolutely up to you. By the way, if you wish to master the pen tool, I highly recommend watching this 30 minute absolute complete guide. It's definitely gonna help you. This is not a masking video. So using the pen tool, I have created an accurate mask of the car minus the areas which we didn't want to turn into gold. And let's go ahead and load that selection by going to select, load selection. I have this car selection, hit okay. There you go. Now, all you need to do is to make a group of all of these adjustments. So this clarity you did, it's also an adjustment, right? So select that, hold the shift key, select the topmost adjustment, press control or command G. And we can name this the gold rush. All right, now with the selection active, now the work is still not done. We are yet to apply some essential finishing touches. First of all, I feel that the gold can use a little more shine. So for that, we can go back to clarity, advantage of a smart object. So double click on the camera or filter and let's just increase the clarity a little more. So we're gonna go with 100, hit okay. Also, I feel that the car has gotten a little too bright. So for it, just inside the group, let's create a curves adjustment layer and simply create a point and take it down slightly. Now at this point, I would recommend that you go ahead and take a break and get back to it. If you love coffee, drink it. If you love music, play it or sing it. Do whatever you want, something that refreshes you and then get back to it because it gives you the opportunity to look at your work with a fresh set of eyes and you might notice some mistakes or something that's off which you might have missed because you were so engrossed before. So in this case, I feel that the gold is too saturated. It has so much color in it. It looks like it's imitation jewelry. Anyway, so let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer and simply decrease the saturation. Not too much. It still needs to be gold. Minus 28 seems about right. Now, can you look at the image and tell me what is still odd now? Because have a look at the gold. It looks all golden. Nothing wrong with that. But if you look closely, in the shadow areas, have a look. These are darker than the shadow areas and it just cannot be. And it feels so wrong. Because of the clarity, the contrast has been applied such that it just looks like a different element pasted as a composite. So for that, we need to lighten up the shadows in this. Let's create a curves adjustment layer and simply take the slider on the left up like that. All right, now when you zoom out, have a look how nicely it matches. So without it, it just looks so odd and unrealistic, but with it, it just matches so well with that of the environment. Just a side note, if you feel that the mask here is too harsh, you can coat the mask, take the blur tool and blur it, or simply add a feather, it's up to you. So you can open the mask properties by double clicking on it, or simply select the mask and go to window and make sure properties is checked, and then simply add a little feather to it. Maybe two pixels, see it adds a little blur. Or if you didn't want to apply an overall feather, just decrease it and just blur this area. Select the mask with the help of the blur tool, strength a little lower, maybe 20%, and just start blurring this area. See, it softens the edge and makes it look more realistic. But trust me, nobody's gonna zoom in that much and check, but still for your own satisfaction, do it. One of the other things you can do here is to add a little more shine. For that as well, we're gonna create, guess what? A curves adjustment layer. And take the slider on the right to the left. It makes the bright areas brighter. Probably this is gonna be too much, so let's keep it at that. And we only wanted it in the bright area, so we're adding this as a shine. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. We want to remove it from the dark area. So take the slider from the left to the right like this. All right. Now hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and make the transition smoother. Hit OK. And there you go. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. Adds that extra golden shine. The shine of the gold all looks nice, but I also feel that this area around the grill needs to have a little more contrast and shine. In other words, it also needs to have a little bit of the clarity. To be able to do that, we can take this clarity out of the group, all right? So now it's everywhere and copy that mask of the group. Just hold the Alt key, the Option key and click and drag it to clarity. Now we have the same mask here, but the difference would be that we're gonna go to that mask, take the brush and also paint the inside areas, these areas in white. So take white as the foreground color and paint in these areas. As you can see, we are doing here. We can also do these areas. Great, and now you wanna make sure that 
it is not darker than the darkest area of the environment. So how do we make sure that happens now? Now that the equation has changed and the clarity is out. Well, this was the curve for the shadow brightness, right? So let's just take it out of everything and place it at the very top. And we're going to have the same mask of the clarity here. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, and click and drag it and drop it right over here. Replace it. Yes. There you go. Fixed. Do not forget to name the layers. Things can get really confusing if you don't. So this was the curves for shadows. Now, since the gold is shining too much, there should be some reflections from it, don't you think, on the sand? So for that, we're going to create a curves adjustment layer and simply brighten it all up. And let's create some contrast by taking the dark areas down like this. And we want this reflection to be yellowish. So let's go to the blue channel and drag it down because blue is the opposite of yellow. If we do that, it kind of gets a little more greenish. So let's go to the green channel and bring that down as well, very slightly. So to simply take it away from the car, we already have the mask, right? So hold the controller command and click on the mask of the car and select the mask of the reflection light with black as the foreground color. Fill that with black. That's all. We missed out this area, no problem. Just paint that area in black. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here is the before, no light from reflection, and here is the after. There's a little leak that happened at the top, so let's paint that black. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, and click on the mask back again to show the image. Now to add more drama, you can do some sky replacement, some vignette effects, that's all up to you. Before you do sky replacement, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E to create a stamp visible error. Otherwise, the sky replacement won't work. You can always delete that later. It needs that layer to detect the skies. Let's go to Edit and Sky Replacement. Now, this is one of the skies that I had selected, and I really like it. And as you can see, it does a fantastic job. We can shift the edge a little bit to the left-hand side, make the sky a little more brighter. And there you go, my friend, a lot more drama. Now, of course, this is the sky replacement group. You can always remove this stamp visible layer. And there you go, my friend. On top of that, I've added some effects, like a little bit of color grading and vignetting, and it creates a fantastic, dramatic result. For videos on color grading and vignetting, please check the links in the description. By the way, when it comes to skies, I highly recommend checking out the Sky Solution Kit. It has everything you need if you're into the sky replacement business in your professional photography workflow. So whatever you do, whether it's weddings, portraits, landscapes, uh, real estate is a big market here. If you want to change the skies to make the image more dramatic, if you are a professional real estate portrait wedding photographer, I highly recommend just checking it out. It's, it's a brilliant set. I use it. I've used it right here. It's a brilliant set of 50 megapixel photos of skies taken with a medium format camera. Very high quality. You also get access to raw images. So check it out. Or And you can use the link in the description. Probably they have a discount going on. If they have, I'll just include the code. So that is how to turn a metal to gold. Now, if you do want to give some finishing touches, like if you want to turn the Range Rover text to silver, well, inside the Gold Rush group, just add a black and white adjustment layer. Select the mask of it, press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush with white as the foreground color. Just start painting on the letters. And you can do the rest yourself. But have a look, it adds such a nice finishing touch. So the basic concept here is pretty simple. And that is, simply add the color that you want to add, add a screen version of it, and add a multiply version of it. And if you want to add more shine and reflections, just add clarity. And on top of that, everything we did was to make it more realistic according to the situation that you're in. They're very situation specific. And that is why I always recommend not to memorize the steps in Photoshop, but understanding the concepts of how not only each tool and feature works, like the curves or the black and white adjustment layer or the hue saturation um, or the blend modes, but also it's important to understand the concepts of compositing, looking at highlights and shadows and texture and other things in real life, observing them and applying it in your work. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support, thank you for watching, I'll see you in my next fun till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.